Hello, welcome to lesson four of the Firebase tutorial video series. In this lesson, we're going to be constructing the user interface for our messaging app so that we can uh, list out all of the messages and also compose a new message to send to the Firebase database. We're not really going to be doing anything with Firebase in this lesson since we're just constructing the user interface. So feel free to skip this video if you're not following along and building this on your own machine. But if you are following along on your own machine and you want to build this app for yourself, then you definitely want to check this video out. So I'm going to start by taking our view controller and I'm going to embed it in a navigation controller. So I'm just going to select the view controller embed in navigation controller. And just to remind you guys, I'm going to go a little bit fast here. Um, like I said, this video series um, is not really geared towards beginners. So uh, you're going to have to know what navigation controllers are and table views and stuff like that. If you haven't ever worked with that stuff before, you might want to check out some of my uh, beginner series material first. Uh, also, students of my beginner course will know how to do all of this stuff already. So um, you can check that out as well. Okay, so we've got a navigation controller. It's naturally got a nav bar there. I'm going to place a table view in here. And I'm just going to um, pin it. I'm not going to constrain to margins, but I'm going to make sure this is top layout guide. And these are do view for that one. It's all going to be zeros. I'm going to add these four constraints and then hit this update frames button. So this button they moved recently, which caused a lot of confusion for people. And there we have our table view going up to the nav bar. We're going to want to add another view controller here. I'm just going to drag that out right there. And this is going to be our compose view controller. So right now uh, there's no class for it. So I'm going to create a new class, new file, Coco Touch class. This is going to be our compose view controller. Uh, subclassing UI view controller language is Swift. Let's save it in the project folder like that. Drag this up there. And then back in the storyboard, I'm going to click on. Let me see if I can set the view correctly so we can see all of our view controllers more or less. Okay, the second one that I added here, I'm going to change its custom class to an instance of the compose view controller like that. Uh, and then what we're going to do, uh, let's look for navigation, uh, let's look for button. I want to add a bar button item here to the first view controller's uh, nav bar. And this item, let's change it to uh, compose. Actually, instead of using the title, you can use a system icon. There, is, there are some basic ones here, and some of them may suit your needs. So Compose is definitely one that would suit our needs because clicking this button, I'm going to hold down Control, drag into this view controller. I want to go to that view controller when that Compose button is tapped on, and I want to present it modally like that, and that's going to cause it to slide up. Now back here in this Compose view controller, uh, let's add a nav bar, navigation bar, because it won't have one when it presents it modally. I'm just going to add a navigation bar like that, like that. And I'm going to restrict this guy to the top layout guide, left and right. It should be zeros. So zero, top, left, and right to add these three constraints. Click on update frames. So there it goes. And then I'm going to search for button again. I'm going to put a button right there on the right hand side. This button is going to be save the post. So I'm going to choose the icon like that for add. And I'm going to add another button, the left hand side here for cancel. And I'm going to change the icon to trash to represent that. Okay, so what we're missing is the text view in order to add the text. I'm going to add a text view here to the Compose View Controller and let's pin it 
to all four edges, get rid of constraint and margins. This should be relative to the navigation bar. Zeros all around. This one I'm going to do to the view. Zero. And then add four constraints. Click this button down here to update frames. So there it goes. I'm going to delete all of this text. And for this title uh, here, I'm going to change this to Compose. So now let's set up some of these elements that we've added to the storyboard um, as IB Outlet properties so that we can access them through Swift code. Let's click on Assistant Editor right here, and that's going to show us the corresponding uh, view controller for the view that we're looking at. Uh, and right here, we're looking at the Compose view controller. So that, let's add the outlets for that first. Uh, if we look at our Compose view controller, let me just try to slide it over like that. Get rid of that guy. Okay, so here we have a couple of elements that we'd want to expose. First thing is the text view. Hold down control, um, slide it over here as, a, as an outlet property. I'm just going to call it the text view like that. So there's our text view. Second thing is we'd want to hook up IB actions to these buttons so that the, the user can tap on them and have it do something. So I'm going to drag this plus button down here and change the connection type to action because we want to provide a function when it's tapped and not expose it as an IB outlet. So I'm just going to call it add post that. And in here we can put in some code to execute. And for the trash icon, I'm going to do something similar down here. Change the connection to action. And I'm going to say cancel post. OK. And over here for our original view controller, um, the right hand side should change as soon as you tap on that in your storyboard. If it doesn't, just go up here. Make sure you look under automatic. Select view controller if yours is on manual. OK, so here we don't need to expose um, this button and create an IB action for it because we've actually already linked up this segue uh, for the button. So when you tap on that, it automatically shows this view controller modally because we've uh, we've done it through the storyboard and created this segue right there. What we need to do, though, is expose this table view. So I'm going to hold down control, click it, and drag it over here and expose that as a table view IB outlet property. Connect. So there's the table view. OK, so let's set up some code here just to make sure that our table view works. I'm not going to have time in this lesson to go through how a table view works and why we're doing what we're doing because it would take a lesson in itself. So that's something that I'm expecting you to know going into this series here. If you're not sure, then um, just Google table view tutorial in Google or check out my beginner course. What I'm going to do here is um, say that the view controller conforms to the table view delegate and the UI table view data source. And then the view did load, you have to remember that you want to set the delegate for the table view to self for the view controller here and the table view data source equals self as well. Now because the view controller conforms to these two protocols now, we have to implement some of the table view methods. So table view uh, number of rows, that's one we need. And that's going to return the number of rows in our data. We also need table view uh, cell four. That's what I'm looking for. Cell four row at index path. And this is going to return the table cell to display for any particular row. So we need something to store the data for the table view. So I'm going to create it up here as a property. I'm going to call it the post data. And right now, for the time being, it's going to be just some strings. So let's just say message one. 
message two, just so we can make sure that the table populates and is working properly. So for number of rows, we're going to return the post data dot count. This is an array of three strings. And as for the table cell, well, back in the storyboard, let's go back to the standard editor view. Back in the storyboard for this table view, let's open up one prototype cell like that. And we're going to have one prototype cell now. Now for this prototype cell, uh, let's give it a reuse identifier. Let's call it the post cell. So that back in the view controller here, we can say table view dot DQ reusable cell. You can see here it returns an optional UI table view cell. With identifier, we just gave it a identifier of post cell. So what I'm referring to is this prototype cell here, post cell. It's going to try to get a reusable instance of a post cell. If there are no post cells that are available, it's just going to create a new one. So let cell equals that. Then I'm going to set the cell dot text label. It's got a label by default. I'm going to set its text property to post data index path dot row. Now index path is this parameter here and it tells us which row the table view is asking for. So I'm basically taking uh, the data for the row that the table view is asking for. And then lastly, I'm just going to return that cell. So if I run it now, uh, let me see, I got to return that because the cell may be an optional type. Let me run this app now. We should see the table view populate with some data. And furthermore, we're going to be able to pop up that compose view controller, uh, but we can't quite dismiss it yet. And I'll show you how to dismiss it. Okay. All right, so we've got our messages here, but uh, the table view isn't quite up to uh, up to the section where I want it to be, so we can move that up a little later. I want to tap on compose here, and it's going to pop up our new view controller. So clicking these, nothing happens right now because we didn't add any code. But let's stop the app, go back to the storyboard. So in order to fix the table view being like that, the problem is that the table view knows that this navigation view controller has this bar up here. So it's actually leaving space to accommodate for that. Um, you know how we position the table view to be uh, flush with the top layout guide? What we're going to want to do is instead position it to be flush against the top. So that way that empty space that it has to accommodate for the navigation bar, um, it's going to go underneath. So let's delete this top constraint here that we made for the table view. Oh, let me delete the delete that click on the table view we're going to add a new constraint to be relative to the view this time and make it zero add the constraint and update frames so now it's going to be flush with the top but that empty space is going to be covered by the nav bar okay so now let's go back to uh, the compose let's implement these two buttons here Let's go to compose view controller and add post. We're going to put a to do here. Uh, post the data to Firebase. And then we're going to dismiss the popover. And in order to do that, we're going to get access to uh, the view controller by using uh, presenting view controller. This has a reference to the view controller that presented this guy and we're going to call dismiss on it and this method dismisses uh, the view controller that it presented so if if that makes sense presenting view controller refers to view controller oops should have double clicked it and calling dismiss on it is going to dismiss any popover view controller that it presented true for animation and completion is nil and we're going to want it to do the same thing 
if the user cancels the post. So let's run the app now and we're going to be able to take a look at the fixed table view as well as the add post and cancel post buttons. So there you can see the table view and if we hit compose we're going to be able to either click this button or this button. They do the same thing right now and that's going to dismiss it. So that does it for the user interface for our messaging app and again if you got lost uh, do check out the beginner stuff first and I'll also provide the uh, download for this project in the description of the YouTube video. However, in that sample code, I'm going to remove my Google service info.plist uh, so, because it contains all of the config data for my app, for my Firebase app. Uh, you're just going to have to slide in your own uh, Google service info plist, okay? So thanks for watching, and in the next lesson, we're going to explore how data is stored in the Firebase database. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.